Welcome to the RSP Boiler Room. I'm Matt Waldman with the Rookie Scouting Portfolio. We'll take a look at Anthony Gordon, the Washington State quarterback. And one of the things that I notice about him, besides the fact that he has a wonderfully quick release, is that his feet don't really match that at this point. Now, I like the fact on this particular play, as he feels pressure in the red zone, that he's going to throw the ball away. That's not something that he's always done either, but he's getting better at that as the season goes along, I believe. But here's the thing. He looks to his right. You see these two receivers are well covered. He does a good job of pivoting back to his left. But his feet aren't really in a uniform position here. And if they were, he might be able to see this tight window here with 41 and be able to throw that ball with good anticipation. Now, it's a very tight window. You see number 54. You see the safety here. He'd have to be able to get rid of the ball right now. And there's no way he can do that. He takes another couple of steps. And he brings the ball back and he realizes that's not going to work. And now he has to scramble around, throw the ball away. So one of the things that you just want to understand is how can he be more efficient with that beautifully quick release that he has? And one of those things that he needs to be able to do is have his feet in a position where he can get rid of that ball immediately. Because you can see as he turns here, if his feet were not so wide apart and he was able to just immediately pivot and throw... This would be open in that tight window. And this is a window that's a viable window for an NFL quarterback to be able to hit this because he has the front end receiver here occupying the safety. So it's really about squeezing it between these two linebackers and the leverage is in an ideal position where he could do that if the ball was getting let go right now, but he can't do that from an unbalanced position like this and do it accurately. So that's what he's going to be working on from now through you know, the rest of his career is being able to get his feet aligned in a set in a way where if he can get his feet as precise as what he can do with his upper half of his release, he's going to be something else to back. All right, let's take a look at this Anthony Gordon interception here. He gets hit throwing this over the middle. The receiver lets it go through his hands and the defensive back makes the interception. I would call this an accurate pass. I would call this a highly accurate pass. But when you study by completion percentage or you chart by completion percentage, you don't get the context here. That's why I don't really give a rat's ass about completions percentage. I don't use it to judge anything. I look at accurate or inaccurate passes because an accurate pass can be an interception. This is an accurate pass. He puts it over the trailing defender's head. He puts it out in front of the trailing defender who's trying to cut off this pass. So there's anticipation involved. There's thought and placement involved. And the receiver has to do the work necessary to catch this pass, but it's the work that's necessary to the task. So I would even say this is a pinpoint pass because the receiver's not doing anything extra that's required to make this catch. So I would say this is exactly as planned. Even if the plan is, you know, in the moment here, he just drops the ball. It bounces off his hands. Now, if it were a pass of general accuracy, I would say that means that it's accurate enough for the receiver to catch, but he has to do extra work outside the scope of the task design to get it done. Now, this is an improvised play to an extent, but I would say, this is within what the design of the task is based on the demands of the play to make the catch. So I would call this a pinpoint accurate pass. A lot of people would probably disagree with me on this. But I'll say this, you know, at least in terms of pinpoint or general accuracy, we know it's accurate. You can't argue that. Even if you look at the box score and the box score won't tell you that. And then you have to make adjustments for and account for it in a way that doesn't fit with how you track things. So for me, it's about accuracy or inaccuracy, not about complete or incomplete. And Anthony Gordon here throws a very accurate pass. Gordon takes a sack here because he's one step too long in reading the field in a certain spot. He's looking to his left here, and you're going to see this defensive back or, or second-level defender slide over to the flat, whereas the cornerback's going to drop. Okay, so you have them playing a little bit of a game with him. You see that. And, you know, at this point, now it's turning over. He's going to turn to the middle of the field. and He's going to see the number 54, the linebacker, dropping to cover this receiver who's going to break across. That's also going to be gone. So at this point, he's exhausted the time he has in the pocket. 
tries to roll to his left, right, and he's sacked. Okay. Now, what could have he had done differently? Well, he's going to have an open man in number 21 rolling, you know, on the wide route to the right. And he knows that. But that first drop, that second drop right here, see how he's got his feet in the ground? This defender is leaning towards that direction. And he's already looking. He's got a defender over top. The leverage here already dictates that this route is covered. If he could turn, be turning right now because he saw this in the split second he turns right here, he might have a shot of being able to hit this receiver early, this slot receiver right here. And if he doesn't see that and doesn't like what he sees here with the linebacker dropping with the turn, instead of see if he had already turned right here, instead he's taking another hop, basically still looking at this left side. If he's looking at the middle right now, he'd be able to either throw this ball and squeeze it in there or know that this is out of luck too. And rather than like be in the air here, he could be turning to his right and throwing this wide route where this linebacker, you know, 10 yards back is covering and he'd have at least a completion to a, a player who has a one-on-one. -on -one. But he takes too much time with all of this because again, Looks to his left. That's one hop. Second hop. Looks to his left. At this point, should have read it. Should have gone on to the next read. At this point, he would have had the open man. But instead, he's hopping a third time and looking left still. Finally, he looks to the, to the right. And at this point, it's too late. One of the things that I really like about Anthony Gordon's game is his ability to lead receivers in tight spaces downfield. And often when he's looking to his left here, he can come back quickly and hit that receiver downfield between, you know, a reasonably tight window and zone. And you can say he's probably following this receiver all the way through the progression. But the fact that he kind of opens up or at least has his eyes and helmet looking all the way to the left and not just waiting for the receiver to reach the point that he wants to throw it is helpful to a degree but really to me it's just that quick throw just the the ability to just release this with such a truncated release and put it right where the receiver can head downfield and this turns into a big gain a lot of it has to do with Anthony Gordon's placement and how quick he can get rid of that ball. One of the things that I really like about Gordon also that I see improving is the quick decision making in the red zone and being able to process more than your first read because he looks to his left comes back to his right, finds that guy to his right, and really it's to the middle of the field. And this is man coverage. You're going to see 12. Let's follow 12 all the way through. He has number three on him all the way, and he just beats him to the post. But you're also going to see – let's see if we can get to it here again. All right. You're going to see Anthony Gordon look to his left. He looks to the middle, comes back to his left, sees that it's well covered because that safety over here, comes back to his right, and just delivers that ball very quickly. And that's what you want because you want someone who can process this compressed area quickly. And I like that he can look from at least one side of the field to at least the middle and come back to it. Gordon is capable of some gorgeous throws. This is one of them. You're going to see this receiver on the over route. He's able to fit it over the zone for the receiver to make the catch in stride. And it turns into a big play because when you can deliver the ball pinpoint in the middle of the field to a receiver in stride, man, you are really giving your offense a chance to make huge plays. Kurt Warner could do it. Aaron Rodgers could do it. Patrick Mahomes can do it. I just named three MVP caliber quarterbacks in NFL history. Now, I'm not telling you that Anthony Gordon's going to become an MVP caliber quarterback or that he's the next Aaron Rodgers, Patrick Mahomes, or Kurt Warner. But what I am telling you is that this is a really good throw and that those guys see the field well. Anthony Gordon, he has moments of really seeing the field well. 
and he has the arm capacity, the arm talent, and the eyes to be able to deliver some tough throws. Some throws of really nice, you know, high level of difficulty that can make a big difference in a game. If he can put together some of the more fundamental aspects of football to stay consistent and not make big mistakes, there's a future for this guy as more than uh, somebody who's on the back of a depth chart. Really seen some nice play from the red zone for Anthony Gordon. Really nice improvement as the season's gone along here. Nothing comes open to his left. Drops back from the pressure, feels it to his right, slides to his left, and finds the open man. This is a vertical throw. This is about 28 yards downfield from the pitch point. And just hits that man right on the button there. And he doesn't take a lot of time. And that's the nice thing is that the better he can see the field with that quick arm slot, I mean, the ability to throw these quick release passes and to get velocity. I mean, it's not a high velocity pass, but you know, he gets this ball out quickly. And that's in a, in a compressed area that's so valuable. There's so many quarterbacks who would have just continued rolling and rolling. Now, this is a pretty wide open play, so maybe that's not true. But you get my point. It's becoming more efficient. I love it because in this area of the field, that's where it matters most. And that's what is often the difference between great quarterbacks or good starting NFL quarterbacks and good college quarterbacks. 